Barbershop Podcast. Live from Boxo Studio, live on Justin TV. I'm here with uh, Ryan Cannon. And, hey. and how are you doing tonight, Ryan? Awesome. Are you? Yeah. You look yeah. like you're doing I'm good. doing great. I'm you're doing excellent. Fired up. Yeah. We're, in the, we're in the middle of summer, uh, and uh, times are good. Times are hot, spicy. The, everything's kind of jumping and hopping. Uh, and in the uh, studio today, we have a cat who is... Uh, Incredibly interesting and very, very talented. Um, and uh, I'm looking forward to get to know him a bit better. And I'm sure some of you are really going to have your eyes opened. And we've got Mr. Uh, Wax Mannequin in the studio. How are you doing tonight, Wax? Great, Kevin. Thanks for having me. Right on. Glad right I on. get to be a cat. Yeah. <laughs> you get to slide I in. Like a, I identify as a cat, so that that works. I, I, I guess nice to be here. You guys have a have a, a pretty sweet place. Yeah. You know, it's, it has a certain vibe. It's been described as... Uh, you know, Wayne's World uh, on acid, or um, <laughs> um, Fish and Musician comes to mind. Uh, Steve Foster thought it was a bit like Gail Fisher from SCTV, John Candy. Uh, <laughs> it certainly has, a, you know, and people get comfortable here, you know, and it's a nice sounding room, and uh, it's certainly nice and cool, right? You know, I'll take it. Yeah, I think we'll heat it up. We'll heat it up a little bit. Um, now, everyone in here is, is different, and I love the fact that we've had filmmakers and um, you know, promoters, radio personalities, musicians of every stripe. Um, but uh, I'm interested to kind of touch a few uh, points as uh, as you see music and art as music, and the whole thing is kind of a, a cultural uh, statement. It's it, it's hugely important in a lot of people's lives. But I'm I'm curious at this stage or, or along the line, um, do you see music as, you know, the end the, or the point of the spear? Is it, a, is it a vehicle for something else you do or is it something in itself? Yeah, my goodness. I, I don't, I, uh, I think it's, it's pretty important to me. I, I get a lot of songs coming into my head and I try to uh, write them the best I can, but I, I think it is the, it is the, it is the, it is the, it is the the point in the spear, like you said. Yeah, it it, <laughs> it, 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 it carry forward, and some there's visual art, and we were talking about album sales, just the how you know, certain albums we were influenced when we were young teenagers to buy an album by how cool the album looked, and, and it was really, <laughs> and it was, it was part of the music. It described, you know, what the what you were about to, the experience you're going to get into, and I think that's been missing. And there's a lot of elements to music, and I see music as a very kind of a fluid thing and there's not one definition of of music yeah i think it's about fun and if i if i if i uh i try to i'm, I'm usually attracted by the things that are, uh, are most fun for me or capture my attention and uh for example uh today my my son was uh building up uh trying to trying to pile blocks onto the back of his um this little uh, Duplo big Lego uh, dump truck, and and he would get four. He, would, he he wanted to put four blocks on the back of it, and but the problem is four blocks didn't fit on the back, and they'd always fall off. And he gets very he gets very very frustrated. He gets really angry because the four blocks wants to it won't stay on the back of the truck, and and I say, you know, you can. Can I help? He said, "Daddy, help!" And I came over to help, and and I said, "If you put, can I put? Can you put one block on top and it and attach them together?" And then I, I put the one on top, and I said, "Push it down so all the blocks are attached together and will stay on the back of the truck, the dump truck." And he and he said, "No, not attached, not attached." You see, like he wanted them to sit there impossibly, but not at actually attached to the dump truck. They wanted to stay on their own volition. But it was, you know, physically impossible for that to work out. And you'd get so angry and so frustrated. And then and then he he was he got enough through experience, he got enough practice or, or uh, insight or self knowledge to like walk away from it and get to, he let himself get distracted by something else, like some little little some drawing on a on a box of the, the toys came in and he said and then he said, "What's that?" And I said, "That's a marker line." And we went over to the, and we started coloring with markers. And then he went back to the trucks, and he was still determined to make these blocks uh, balance impossibly. But he was a lot more patient about it. Where he would put them on, and he would kind of say, and they would fall off. And he'd say, "That's okay." And he'd put them back on and say, "That's okay." And I said, and I would encourage him. I said, "You're being very patient," and and he still ended up getting getting. 
extremely frustrated in the end um, because he, he did, couldn't accept that the, the, the universe wouldn't work, wouldn't you know submit submit to his will or right, do his bidding. Right. But um, but uh, he uh, he uh, and then and then and then it was supper time. Mom said it was supper time, so we had to. To, to, he was kind of upset. He had to leave leave the blocks and the truck, but went up and had dinner, some uh, pork chops. <laughs> <laughs> so, it, does uh, is there music in the house? I found when I had kids, it really went away completely. I found it wasn't a mistress that I could dance with just a little bit uh, in the situation I was in, you know. And uh, and you know, my kids are kind of at the point now where, you know, I, to to be a musician and to be able to go out there. Um, um, is difficult, and you have to be very careful about what you play and where you play and how you record and how you, you know, pursue your craft. Yeah. Like, what kind of changed from when you started, like, writing and, and performing live? Um, you, you, know, you know, well, first of all, describe yourself. If you had to be your own PR guy, you know, and pigeonhole and say, Wax Mannequin, someone like, well, I've, I've read him, I see a poster, what's he do? How, how, how would you describe him? How would you describe yourself in a, in a benevolent way? Uh, I think I'm someone who, who um, has, I keep talking about, I'm a dad now, so I, I think my kid is, is pretty amazing, but, and when I was a kid, I would, would, he's just not very good at taking naps, and, and I wasn't very good at taking naps, but my parents, would, I would nap, go for naps in the car, they'd go for drives, you know, when gas was free, we'd go for drives, and, and they'd put me to sleep in the car, and, and so I, I got conditioned to fall asleep at the in cars, and so uh, a really pro- a dangerous profession for me is is you know a tour being a tour musician because I drive like six eight right. hours between towns, and yeah. uh, you know I for for f- eight of the seven of the eight hours I'd be falling asleep at the wheel. So I kind of trained myself to you know find ways to keep to be awake, and it, you know it'd just be like setting the alarm clock on my f- on my phone that it would sort of beep really loud next to my ear and wake startle me awake and opening the window and doing these different things and eventually I just almost like it was like through biofeedback or something I would um release bursts of uh I can release bursts of uh adrenaline into my system uh because, because I just imagine I visualize like a a a, a a transport truck driving towards yeah. me or <laughs> I visualize myself veering <laughs> off, the, not off nice. towards a cliff and then having to steer back or, or running in the forest and a, and a giant lion sort of screams at my face and I have to <laughs> suddenly my, tra- my kid is there and I have to protect him from this lion who's about to rip our faces off and then uh, my adrenaline gets going or you, the most effective well, all those like life threatening situations the most um, uh, invigorating uh, imagine uh, situation I I imagine I envision is a uh, is just the police uh, you know, police cherries coming on behind me like as though I'm speeding they're gonna pull me over because yeah. whenever that happens even if you know if the cop cop whizzing by with his cherries on your stomach goes is, in your you know, mouth like, is it yeah. is it did I did I fuck up is it yeah. gonna pull me over <laughs> and then they whiz by and you're so relieved and suddenly you feel like your legs are on fire and you're just uh, completely awake and so. Uh, so you did, that's you did, how I kept you, from dying from on the dying road. Dying on the road. It was so I think that's my greatest accomplishment as a as a as a touring musician. Just to stay alive. Stay, yeah, <laughs> just staying alive. Understand the. Just trick myself into 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 continuing into the process. Well, we'll let the you know the listeners, people who aren't familiar with your music. I think you know it's it's poetic, it's it's. It's it's insightful. It's artistic, and I say, oh, in, 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 you know, in a, in a very non pandering sense. No, it's, it's just it's, songs. Yeah, you know, songs are you know. I, no, I don't. I, I don't mean to. Dis- yeah. I'm sorry. I, that's a huge compliment. Thank you. Like that's very. That means a, a hell of a lot to me that you would say that. I uh, I, I uh, write songs, and I write songs. I uh, I'm excited about, and I think, yeah, everyone will. Will will like this is a fun song. I I think everyone will like it, or I hope everyone will like it. Yeah, and you said it was about having fun and, and at least uh, getting that emotion across to people. And then a year or so goes. Yeah, exactly. It's about fun, and in sometimes my songs are very dark, but mm-hmm. they come. They they have you know I they're whimsical. They have a sense of humor. I think about them, and uh, and then a year goes by, and I look back at what I had created, and I think that was really fucking weird. Yeah, like, yeah. Nobody could possibly, you know. 
uh, get where I'm coming from, but yeah. then some people do, and that's that's really uh, meaningful to, for me. When it's very well. It's very attractive when someone doesn't what doesn't lend themselves to convention when they don't go after or they don't follow a, a grid or you know a template of any kind, and where the music is really an outward kind of expression of who this person is, and 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 writing styles, and and it's a difficult thing, you know, not to be. To overproduce, underproduce, be self-critical, you know, have stuff half done or sitting in a garbage can that might be great. And, um, you know, um, you know, I've enjoyed your music and I've seen you some, play some some interesting venues. I like that, that you'll go out and you'll play somewhere other than Johnny's Pub and and expose a kind of a cross section of different people to your music. I want to play uh, Black Bells. Now, is there anything that about Black Bells uh, that's a, a story that you want to share with us before we play it? I wrote it, wrote it when I was in Rotterdam, sleeping on a sofa. I was sick. And uh, I was at my friend's, uh, Mark Lauderman's house. Mark is a, uh, a really powerful singer, songwriter, sing, uh, writer, songwriter in, uh, in the Netherlands. And uh, I've known him for a few years, and I've just seen him kind of keep writing and growing and, and honing his, his, his writing, his craft. He's a, he writes and sings in English. Uh, and originally, that was initially when I'd hear his songs, it was kind of charming and awkward, sort of his his uh, his take on the language. And over the years, it's just he's he's uh, used he, he's harnessed that as a, as a real strength. Uh, whether he knows it or not, his his approach to writing in English is slightly other and slightly outside of the way uh, you know a native English speaker might phrase things. And and so when I hear him write incredibly poetically in English, uh, but in in this kind of slightly alien mode, mm-hmm. it's it can be really overwhelming and powerful because he writes about very universal, uh, uh, sad things. <laughs> and Black Bells has a significance and it takes you back to that place. I guess yeah, you know, yeah, every place. time. So okay, we're gonna hear some Wax Mannequin at barbershoppodcast.com and this is Black Bells. Three black bells ring out for something One of them is calling you Close to those before As we gather round in tears With anguish it burns us with a careful tone What you singing for? Once young boy he built a fort Call around his pals and come to play If there ain't enough room in there You gotta pick and choose Hey boy don't make no Stuff as you will Remember we all like these jeans We can grace his mind We'll come and cut your face You ain't thinking yet Once born man he got a point Talks about a proper way to be And if you can't be what's proper You probably want them Be man don't make no mistake Go demanding something from us Better leave the way with a perfect pace So your soldiers march on home to you They're asking, what did you really mean? Once old man, he made a sound With the word he put them young guns down Do they ever be bothered to listen to what was said? Hey dad, don't you know by now, can't you see that you once was what it is? And you looking mighty noble in my eye. Advice has never changed your mind. Only old mistakes. Three black bells ring out for reason. One of them is calling you to fight. Another one is song. Close to those before, as we gather 
supposed to play a song now am i no you play a song when you feel like playing a song it's kind of a loose format here i like that you like that i like it too because i, I feel pretty uh i just finished my day job well for a while i do supply teaching when i'm not doing music and i do supply teaching and uh i really like that job and now it's done though because it's the last day of school for the kids tomorrow and it's very and i don't think they're gonna hire a supply teacher for the last day of school yeah so you're, are you feeling an <laughs> emptiness like when the, when the kids leave home like, no it's like, just i want to <laughs> i don't know i'm just trying I, I mean that spot where i don't it's like i don't know if it's the last day of school right now or if i'm gonna work tomorrow and right. tomorrow is the last day of school and it's pretty deluxe life because i i get to relive like being in elementary school mm-hmm. every every year when when school comes to an end i get all excited just like i did in grade yeah. five so. yeah it's kind of cool i had i had kids <laughs> old in life you know so my my daughter grace just graduated senior kindergarten yesterday Woo. yeah and she won uh, most improved student too so she had to, uh, to yeah big, geez they have that award in kindergarten yeah was they good. really they really start them young don't they yeah like, i got, think i got most improved in in grade eight and then when i graduated elementary school but yeah now can they really put the pressure on well at least show it like you know <laughs> as i said she liked to spin in in, the, in just junior kindergarten and at least she liked to spin. spin that was her thing spin, spin and yeah, the chairs that was yeah. her thing <laughs> and they were like okay so she spun no one fails junior kindergarten oh my gosh yeah but apparently she's like you know in her writing and all that so it's 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 good and and and, and there are times where i say my goodness i wouldn't have the patience and the temperament to do it all the time well and, your parents so yes you do yeah yeah but to do it in a professional environment when there's 30 of them and yeah they lose their charm i guess <laughs> it can happen yeah. it can happen um and when we're listening to that song it, um, because we do some production ryan and i have done production and, and i like the airiness of it and you were speaking of yeah you know it's interesting writing and recording you know the same song just depending on the the volume the attack the lilt on it you know can can be a heavy song or it can be kind of a light song um do you find yourself feeling a recording in different modes or is yes it, you know? i do and i feel disoriented because i don't know where to look am i is where's the camera is it in william claxton's eyes am I, <laughs> where am i supposed to direct my the, the, the silver the pole, the silver pole. <laughs> Oh, the, 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 like directly the in front, ball. the most yeah. obvious. I never look yeah, at, for the most obvious. They're little cameras, so yeah. right in front they're of hard me. to miss. They're and, easy to miss. And maybe we should change every week the location and, and just not tell anyone. Start hiding things. them. Yeah, you guys work for the yeah. NSA. <laughs> we, yeah, yeah. We, uh, it's we, all we, archived. They, I'm, sh- I'm, I'm sure I'm we transcribe them when we're done. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We don't want the shorthand anymore. God damn it. So, um, song and songwriting. Um, do you approach it from just you know, kind of opening your heart, or is it a, ever a, a political axe to grind? I, you know, I, I, I know people sometimes write both ways, where it, it falls out of them, and other times some event hits them that they just feel compelled they need to write about. Yeah, I don't know. I can't answer that. I just I get pretty paranoid sometimes. Uh, sometimes I feel pretty silly, and so uh, I think I, I I write things that make me terrified or make me laugh or both. Mm-hmm. But um, I don't know. I mean. Maybe it's um, being a, all grown up, or maybe it's a react. Maybe I'm reacting to the the, uh, the bre- depressing times that we live in. But I'm writing really positive things now. <laughs> like I, I just feel very optimistic it, because I've never really been one to go with the the gr- the grain or the natural course of 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 things. And uh, I don't know. I just feel really good about. Uh, about life, but mostly about uh, about uh, the impossible, uh, 
this, this, this is a, these impossible times that we live in because mm-hmm. it's either going to all uh, completely collapse, or uh, which we find and won't, you know, or it'll, or it'll uh, blossom into ut- uh, a, a strange yeah, it's, it's the end robot of the- utopia, and yeah. that'll be even better than everyone dying. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be certainly fodder for I'm pretty content. a lot of material. I think, yeah, I, I think it's the end of the beginning or the beginning of the end. It's yeah. going to be one way or the other. But there's going to be people, uh, you know, song and dance men and, and artists and poets. And, you know, the, it's like at the end of the day, in, in the worst conditions, you know, a song was sung and someone whistled something and, uh, you know, a dance made someone laugh. So, you know, I, I think the human spirit is a, is a thing that you know perseveres and i think and for me that, that's that's the allure of music you, you guys know. got every star trek movie here or just the odd ones like yeah. or just the just uh the actual movies i think there's only three have every episode I bought, yeah. in the garage sale i bought uh every episode of star trek including the gorn our first manager we, we, <laughs> we're putting a cd together and we go well who's our who's our lawyer like we we're making people up because we didn't have anyone and we decided our lawyer's name would be Kirk V. Gorn. You need to list your lawyer on your, uh, on your CD. <laughs> yeah, it was absolutely. It's a, it was that's gonna... a fucking excellent lawyer name, <laughs> Kirk V. Gorn. <laughs> <laughs> the bur- the, that's a, that's uh, yeah. <laughs> it was. I, we were too. I think we were. We put that album cover together in twenty minutes because yeah. we get out the door and we're pretty high. We were really high, <laughs> really high when we came up with Kirk V. Gorn. Yeah, yeah. Is that a Star Trek character? Yeah, the Gorn was a giant lizard that Kirk had to fight, and instead of the, the destroying. <laughs> oh, I know that one when he goes yeah. on the mountain. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Really the events and events. I didn't even know the name of it. Yeah, the Gorn. It's called Holy the. Uh, shit. How do you know it's the Gorn? Because he never talks, right? He's just yeah, the Gorn. The Gorn ship. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But we laughed about it for years, and I think it, what the was it called? The arena, I think it's called. And it was, uh, yeah. you know, it was, it was showing the benevolence of these godlike creatures. And instead of destroying the common, they only let the the captain of each ship battle it out. And Kirk's giant brain inventing gunpowder and shooting this Shit. lizard, you know. But uh, I haven't seen the new one. Is the new one any good? The new Star Trek. You seen it, right, Ryan? It's awesome. It's cool. Awesome. It's so good. Great. Especially if you're if you're into Star Trek. Yeah. There's a lot of they did a lot of really cool tip of the hats. Yeah. There's a lot of really neat stuff in it. It still takes place in that parallel universe. Yeah. Star Trek. It's they, n- but it's not the same parallel universe where Spock has a mustache, right? Does he grow a mustache? No, so, no. I thought that'd hole. be pretty savvy <laughs> if they weave that in there. Like, oh, yeah, and I, Sulu. Sulu was heterosexual in that. Yeah, yeah. He was all over Uhura. And yeah. He what? Wanted it. Yeah. Just racking up the, the poon. <laughs> Yeah, no, they, he did an awesome job with it. There's a lot of really cool moments. I don't want to spoil anything, but yeah, they yeah. do a lot of really cool stuff. There's um, a villain from the past in it. That's pretty neat how they yeah. put it in. His cons in there, though, right? Yeah, cons I don't, in not it. To yeah. spo- okay, I don't want to. No spoiler alert. Well, I know everyone knows that. I didn't know that. I didn't. I didn't. I purposely didn't read anything about the movie before I went to see yeah, it. And then when he you. said he was con, it just blew my mind. Yeah, ah! Apparently, they denied and denied and denied that it was like that was con. And then it came out in yeah. Star Trek Week. I told you. Yeah. I told you. Uh-huh. It was I don't know. I don't even know. I, see, I don't read spoilers either. It just happened. No. The, uh, is it true that dude, what is that director's name again? The, the monster guy. He's awesome. The J.J. Abrams? Abrams, yeah. yeah. Uh, he's like hit or miss awesome. But the, he, is it true he's doing the Star Wars too? Because that, be, yeah. that would be bizarre if because they're kind of enemies, Star Wars and Star Trek, right? Wow. Well, we'll see. We'll see what he does with it. I think they both it. love yeah. money. You know, yeah. So they all like they money. money yeah. They get over there. Um, not to get off topic, but I like definitely to, you know, get, get, you know, stop talking that, about my music. It's like, okay, it's like, <laughs> but it's like you know, other people. Like, talk about you, you give here. birth. It's like music. You're like your kids, right? It's tough for you to love them the longer they're kicking around, right? So it's up for other people to love them. You let it out on the world. I <laughs> yeah. think I just I just so, want to watch you guys sit around and get baked. I think that's the most interesting thing. In the, yeah, the, va- the vaporizer is sitting there un- unfired. Yeah, I got some shred somewhere. <laughs> that's my new term, by the way. I'm calling it shred. What's shred? Shred. I think it's left. Leftover weed. If you have a, like a little bit of weed, because you, I'll put it on Urban Dictionary. Nice. <laughs> it's not not just to uh, work a skateboard really well. Yeah. Shrek's rebellious <laughs> yeah. teenage son. Oh, Shrek, Tran- transgendered oh, shred. son. Shred. shred. Oh, shred. Okay. It's like Jed, I guess, or Fred, but ogreish. Yeah. 
Oh, Grish. Well, I'm going to play another song, whether you like it or not. Okay. Okay. And uh, I want to play uh, Body Black, Body White. Um, again, something about the recording process or how you wrote it or how it came to be that you're, kind of sticks in your mind. This, uh, okay, I won't be too evasive with this one. It's a, a, a my friend wrote a book about Gordon Lightfoot. Uh, my friend Dave Bedini wrote it, and he was putting out his book. It's a very funny book. He asked me to play the book launch. He said, I'm launching a book about, about it's a fake biography of Gordon Lightfoot um, because he's kind of a, an elusive cat. He you know, shies yeah. away from interviews and media and whatnot. And so um, Dave is a super fan and kind of Im, uh, imagines Gordon's life in a series of fan letters to Gordon Lightfoot. Um, using some factual, the few f- f- factual tidbits, you know, we know about Gordo, and you know, just imagining uh, what it would be like. Yeah. You know, like when he was, uh, you know, there's a chapter about uh, Gordon Light for winning this 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 uh, award or getting to sing the solo at a church choir concert, and and then Dave writes, "Would you, you know, what's that?" A very proud moment for you and riding in the back seat home. I know your your father was very disapproving of your musical interest. Did, did he was he silent in the front seat as he drove and and you just wanted some kind of reassurance and some kind of you know support from your dad. And this is really kind of embarrassing uh, and probably totally off base. Uh, you know uh, these bit off base lies about Gordon Lightfoot's life life kind of preached directly to Gordon Life so I'm, f- I'm sure uh, he would, m- the man would be would be pretty upset if he ever read the book <laughs> and it was a bit of a it was a bit of a revenge piece because as a super fan uh, the Rio Statics as super fans they covered uh, the wreck of the Edmund Fitzgerald once and then uh, apparently Gordon Lightfoot was really dissatisfied with that version of the song he thought they were making fun of it and they weren't making fun of it so I think this was uh, that that sort of stuck with yeah, Dave with, a with bit, Dave yeah. and and he wrote this book about it and uh, and then he asked me to write a song about uh, about Gordon Lightfoot or or a cover or do a cover song or or you know something or inspired by Gordon Lightfoot so it's sort of uh, a, a song of lies. Excellent, body black, body white, on barbershoppodcast.com dot com, wax mannequin. <laughs> Oceans wide, but what I see 
see is wire Valley deep in the shadow of fire Love is blind, faith is blinder than none Day and night gonna marry one Body white, body white as the sun Body black, body white, song about lies. You know, I like the spatiality in a song. You know, I, yeah. it was uh, kind of a cross, crossroads I'm at. I've been playing a lot of acoustic stuff in the last few years, but I've, I've, I've had a yearning to plug in and, and get electric with it. But uh, kind of fi- making it find its own uh, its own watermark, I guess. You know, because it's things uh, with space in them and that are tasty. You know, I think those are the things that stick in people's heads. And a lot of great recordings have been done for precious little money, just, you know, like the Trinity Church or somewhere where there's a, you know, it's, it's. I think the, the too much is often put in the production end and not enough in the germ of the song. You know? I go for the tasty... Yeah. The germs. I try to avoid the germs. <laughs> the bad germs, unless it's wheat germ. You know, we had this whole germ thing happening. A member of my family got fairly fairly sick, and then I got a call from that the, the house, the the health center, the the health center, the gen, the health. What do you call it? Some kind of administrative health uh, uh, board that yeah, said it's, that it's uh, escaping me right now. That the uh, oh my goodness that um, because my my boy had spent time with the person in my family who was under the weather they said well your boy's got to go on antibiotics I'm like, are you kidding me he's fine can he get t-? no he's you know put him on antibiotics and you go into you know go into the, the hospital and get and 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 uh i said well, can we get him tested first to make sure you know and then if he's indeed contracted this illness that he can and we'll, for sure we'll do that and they said no we're going to recommend it either way and i mean it wasn't like legally mandated but it was pretty it sounded pretty yeah. important you don't want to mess with that no, crap no. but but antibiotics really suck too so I was really torn and he's fine he's young he's, he's yeah. got bacteria and immune system's going to bounce back and all that I'm sure it's just it seems uh, very strange that we were well I was speaking of just the germ of the beginning like the idea of the thing that kind of gives birth to it but yeah this time of year that there's a lot of people have been dropping dead it's that <laughs> and, seasonal and, and, thing isn't it it's, it's brutal imagined or real super flus that kind yeah. of knock us back but. yeah it was just uh, it, it was rough I was totally in bad shape last week you were my, yeah. yeah my girlfriend is not good this week and my ex-wife is not good this week and this it's is like it. Don't wow bother. Yeah. you just wonder you wonder and then uh, you know you get a nice day, you know. We got a long weekend coming up, and I'm hoping it's, uh, you know, if uh, every once in a while you get you, you catch a break and you have a, a, a couple of really good days. Everything and, is uh, kind of right today, isn't it? Like I feel that yeah. too. It just it's sunny, but it's just I don't know. Things are seem seem like I don't know. I'm I'm all about this like optimism kick. Or, yeah. I, as I as as I said to you, you know, if if we you know squeak sneak by this little. Little transitional age we're in the midst of, and it's going to be pretty fucking rad yeah. to be alive. It could be like the new beginning, and that yeah. would be that's cool to think that that's there. And I think there's enough people who give a shit, and there is, you know, with you know, enough people rightfully saying that the Satan the, is the internet, you know. No, Other it's, no, it's, it's not. Gonna, it's all about it's all about like uh, this whole privacy concern is really timely, and it, I, I think if there's no, I'm kind of with the whole. Uh, private uh pirate party credo i mean not the canadian well the canadian pirate party i haven't looked into them at all but that notion that uh you know the the german pirate party is doing pretty well and and uh i guess part of their their uh mandate is is you know open you know open information but also uh the lack of i th- I, I i if i understand right they would dissuade discourage privacy uh, of governments, mm-hmm. you know, more than private, you know, private, private citizens should be private citizens, but public but, government, you know, yeah. government and government yeah. officials should be entirely public. And I think second best would be that everyone is, is. I mean, I think I think the the notion of being a private citizen it's a lost cause. We're never gonna we're never gonna retain we're never gonna retain retain a scrap of our own privacy from here on in. But uh, I think that will as time goes on will also hold true to everyone in authority uh and i think that could i can i could see that turning into a really healthy 
kind of situation where everyone is watching each other. Yeah. You know, it's not it's not a big brother scenario. It's a it's just this mutual suspicion and mutual respect. Yeah. And you know, you we better not try to fuck each other over because it's it's going to go south pretty quick and and uh I don't know. I I haven't totally figured it out, but uh I, there's, there's some seed of, of utopia in there. Yeah, and the, the timeline I'm finding, now I'm getting older, timeline was always like forever, like I was going to live forever and mankind has been crawling along on this slow journey and then you get older you realize it's like wow you know it, it's really accelerating so, yeah. you know, the way what, what we're doing and how we're doing it and how much of our humanity remains and how much kind of gets stripped away it's all you know and it, and it happens quickly you know and i know in the in the universe we live in it's tough for me not to go nuts because you you, you overthink uh, oh yeah everything that's happening and there's so much to overthink so, yeah um you know it starts out be, being fun it starts out being fun to overthink and then until you hit that spiral when it's yeah. like a self a self when you start it's coming a, it's up a with repeating answers, loop. It's, it's just a, it's an error in a computer program, in the computer program of the of consciousness. When you can fall into those 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 uh, spirals like a black hole of self awareness, yeah. and I was I certainly fell prey to that a lot until I stopped smoking pot. But then I then I discovered <laughs> that there's actually some pretty awesome strains of of pot that don't do that to people. Like yeah, and and I guess it, different kinds of pot affect people differently it's this whole thing i mean mm-hmm. i really think uh everything is okay but uh, you know you got to pick and choose your battles that's for sure that's for sure. i should we've stop been, talking we've, we've I'm, start, few, I'm starting to feel stone <laughs> just being in the environment i think it happens there's an osmotic effect yeah is that even a word ryan can you look osmotic Osmo- osmos- it is now osmos- 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 i'm gonna put like it in urban better. dictionary yeah. <laughs> angela mosco wants a piece of that um so uh, the, you've got a couple new songs and i'm gonna get you to uh, play one of the new ones in a bit um do you do, do you find on this po- positivity that you're kind of on right now that that's worked its way into uh, to what you're writing uh, uh no not yet but it will <laughs> it will <laughs> Incredibly sarcastic. No, that's not entirely true. I've got one fairly hopeful song, and I'm like, that's the beginning. And uh, I don't know. It's this thing. Uh, you work through stuff and, and uh, come out the other end. And I always, I always thought uh, of myself as a as a pretty optimistic person. But then, you know, you, you get fun. You have fun. You get stuck in yeah. ruts of of dire cynicism just because it's funny more than it's not necessarily cons- constructive in the long run but it's uh it's funny and entertaining and, and and gives you some perspective i think a cynical person a cynical person is uh or a skeptical person a cynical a skeptical person uh is not is actually like looking they're just not they're not skeptical or cynical they're just uh discerning right they're, yeah. you're just looking for you know, filtering like, you, and you, you, you have a lot of yeah. doubt and you know, if someone's completely optimistic mm-hmm. all the time like <laughs> what's wrong you with figure that guy? they're missing <laughs> they're missing a lot of shit yeah. like it's not all good yeah and you gotta you pick and choose what's right and then when you find what's right you, you get pretty optimistic um nick uh the kettle black has a good way of putting it that like uh sinus or pessimism is not the opposite of opposite optimism right the optimism is the opposite of optimism is depression is like when everything when there's a deep depression like everything is completely blank and meaningless and there's not an you know you can't you know intellectually you you think there should be a reason to exist but emotionally on every other other facet of 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 your day-to-day doings you know you can't you can't Can't convince yourself that there's a reason to exist that's that's depression and that's kind of the opposite of optimism pessimism is not you know pessimism is is secret is just very choosy optimism i think all right you can feel like picking picking her up here's a song about uh how lucky i am a friend of mine has a lucky song and I kind of ripped him off and, and <laughs> it's a totally different song but i thought yeah i should write a song about why I feel lucky because I think we're all lucky for certain reasons and I'm lucky because I you know I don't really think I'm a criminal or anything but I get away with shit (laughs) and we all do from time to time yes we do and case in point it was sort of 
buzzing along uh, and got pulled over. I was speeding and I got pulled over and I thought that's I'm that's it, you know. That's it. I, I I just got a new car, right? I for a couple of years we were a one car family and I was so I felt so liberated because you know, you could take the bus everywhere, the train, I could borrow a car or use the family car or and even even more liberating would be the car share program if I got into that thing. And then uh, but due to the logistics of where we live now and and the logistics of my uh my uh you know duplicitous career path I, I kind of need I convinced myself that I needed a car so I got a really good deal on a of a on a 2006 Honda Civic and it, to me that's like the fanciest thing I've yeah. ever bought and the cops must have thought so too <laughs> yes right <laughs> so what's that guy driving get me it? back on track good <laughs> job and I he pulled me over and and he walk up all the sort of stressful preamble <laughs> and you're waiting and shit and he walks up yeah. and says open oh, you open the window and he, he doesn't really look he looks for a few seconds and doesn't he's kind of just sussing out to the inside of my car and me and smelling and all that and you know and then he just sees a little baggy in between my seats and he says what's in the bag <laughs> And I was really taken off guard because I thought I was I was speeding like a motherfucker. Mm-hmm. And he just said, "What?" And then, "What's in the bag?" So I pulled up the little uh, this little baggie that was between my it's like in the console, yeah. and it was a bunch of carrots. Yeah. And he said, "It's carrots." <laughs> <laughs> and he laughed, and he was like, he was ba- he was he was bewildered, and he said, "You go go you know get going." <laughs> Just slow down and you're all right. Just get going. <laughs> and I felt very lucky that I got away with going so fast on the highway. With Garrett. Yeah. <laughs> healthy. Yeah. Con- he figured I was just health conscious. Yeah. Like him. He's probably a health conscious guy. There you go. I'm like him. So I wrote a song about how lucky I am. It's called Someone Fixed the Game for Me. Oh, my goodness. <sighs> One four o oh, on the four o oh, one. The red lights flash me down at Kingston. The cop says, "Son, I'm just like you. Try to ease up and pass on through." My shopping cart won't fit anymore. Thoughtless, I walk right through the door. The clerk says, "You don't look like a thief." I'll let it slide, just pay me next week. I'm shifty in the customs line. My suitcase is full of shitty Dutch wine. She hears the bottles rattle and clink, but waves me right through with a knowing wink. Cause someone's fixed the game for me. Somebody's fixed this game for me. I'm not on top, but I can see that somebody fixed it for me. Oh, I'm sick and scared of living downtown with that disenfranchised, volatile crowd. The bank man says he'll sell me a loan for a no money down suburban home. The cop, the nurse, the fire brigade. When I break down, they run to my aid. It don't matter just how deep I get stuck. Someone arrives to dig me up. Someone's fixed the game for me I got a pair of nines and I'm hit with a three I'm no card shark, but the dealer knows me Somebody fixed it, I see When other blokes get tossed in the clink I snake by to frolic and drink Some say it's cause I'm clever or nice But that's just code for privileged and white So if you're of the less fortunate ilk Man up and oppress somebody else Then in a generation or two Someone will fix the game for you Cause someone fixed the game for me Somebody fixed the game for me I've scrambled high enough to see That somebody fixed it for me But a storm has come, there's a flood rushing in It's up my neck, it's through to my skin Q 
Keep your head down, everything's fine. Don't worry about yours, I got what's mine. You see, the auctioneer is manning the raft. He's calling out the oars and the mast. If I can bid the other guy down, I will sail home, the rest can drown. Someone's fixed the game for me. Somebody's fixed this game for me. That sun is hot, I'm sailing free. Somebody fixed it for me. Oh, someone fixed the game for me. Someone's fixed this game for me. Not a drop to drink, no land to see. Can somebody fix this for me? Can somebody fix this for me? Can't somebody fix this for me? Ooh, yeah. I like it. Somebody fix the game for me. And a lot of uh, a lot of words, a lot of good poignant words, but uh, you didn't drop one of them. <laughs> you what? Be proud you didn't drop one word. I thought, wow, that's pretty good for a new song. Well, I just, so, you, you know. You know I have a three. I was screwed up three times when, when I try to put a new song in the set. Yeah. Just, you know, and no matter how much I practice it, I always mess it up three times and then it's fine. But I, I think I had to pause a little bit longer than to remember some of the words. No, uh, very impressive. You know, I, I can't remember some of my old songs. Why, thank you. Little. Um, when was the time that you found that uh, like, music was something that uh, you enjoyed? I've, I personally, I love scaring the shit out of myself. I liked uh, going down, jumping off of a... place the, uh, I'm just having an audio problem right now that's we're okay. just uh wax doesn't have the earphones on headphones on so he's wondering what why no nope. everybody comes static yeah okay <laughs> no I mean, yeah, just, then it's me yeah. it's old, <laughs> he's losing <laughs> it Oh, going to like the quarry and jumping so off the crazy. 50 foot tower or something and I like scaring myself and yep. I remember the first time I went up on stage it was like at an open stage and it scared the shit out of me and then eventually get to the point where you, you do it and you know I don't think I ever got super comfortable with it and I like that I like going outside of my comfort zone yeah and do you remember like doing performances because you know there's an again I'll say it there's a there's um, an artistic element and I don't and I just by that I mean it's super addictive isn't it I, yeah. for me and for certain personality types like to have the, to kind of live on a bit of a razor's edge or you know uh, or you know whether that's you know if you're skydiving or doing like meth or <laughs> yeah. you know just doing uh, socially uh, upsetting things it's like a you, you know, sometimes it goes really well, and sometimes it goes terribly, terribly wrong. And and that from a very early point, um, that that was just that puzzle was so frustrating and confounding to me when when I could play my music and feel like like it had that perfect communication with everyone in the room. Week I play and it's. Paper on cat's eyes and scratching the inside of your yeah. spine and stuff. It just doesn't, you know. When you, and it's just, it's impossible. It's an impossible uh, kind of magic. And that became the the variance between the highs highs and the lows got got me really addicted to the whole thing. And traveling is the same way. When you yeah. travel, it's uh, incredibly uh, terrible sometimes. And then you you know get to the venue and everyone's there to have a nice time and 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 you set set up your show and you you realize oh all of these people are happy to be here and, and it must everything must be going really really well and you play a great show and and suddenly you forget all that uh yeah well, in fact you changed crap. your tire and the you know back back uh back a uh, highway in <laughs> in saskatchewan somewhere and you know, the car slipped and smashed its yeah. fucking doodad and some weird trucker pulled you over, <laughs> dragged you to his, his buddy's shop in rural uh, Bruno, Saskatchewan, and, and then they fixed you up. 
The, the, the stories are great, but if you're a musician on the road, especially in those parts, you know, they, they tend to get treated very well. I think people like, you know, if, if, if they see musicians, I've put my, a number of them up here, you know, crossing the country, and it's like, it always, it's always very trusting for me. If someone's in that in that game, they're not, you know, it's almost a pre-qualifier that they're, they're someone I can turn my back on, you know. Oh, yeah. It's like, you know, and I don't have to worry about where's my microwave, where's my TV set, you know. <laughs> it's like, they may be poor, but they're, 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 they're an honest, th- uh, you know, appreciative group. Yeah, know, I think in uh, general. musicians are really cognizant of, uh, like, it, uh, people talk about karma, but it's, whether you think of the metaphysics of it all, it's just uh, logical that if you're an asshole, you're not going to get very far. Uh, and so, you know, it doesn't take any kind of mumbo jumbo to to figure out that that you know if you're a traveling musician, you 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 no one's going to help you out if you're a thief yeah. or if you're yeah, rude. a jerk. And, and <laughs> you see that with people who haven't kind of gone to a lot of music shows are, are kind of still have that uh, still kind of have that. The distance between the performer and the audience or whatever and, and figure these I don't know these people they must be uh, either famous or they must be criminals or something or something in between and that's kind of the allure and then there's a bit of a disillusionment when 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 people realize that travelers are, are normal and then uh, also it's the disillusionment is met with like a you know a relief and, and really lasting friendship yeah. Um, I want to play another track. Uh, I don't want to. I want to play. Uh, don't want to go. Um, and uh, anything about that particular song that brings back the smell of Grandma's kitchen or takes you to the, you know, why you wrote it. And you know, I wrote it pretty quickly, but it, it's something that really I thought I was proud of and uh, kind of sums up my the the push and pull of of travel for me. Like when I'm on the road, I hate it. When I'm not on the road, I I. Well, I hate not (laughs) being, being I miss it. I miss it, yeah. All right, the song about the road. Many, many songs have been written about the road. This is Wax Mannequins on Barbershop Podcast. What if my time's running thin? Let me hold you while I can. No, I don't want to go away. No, I don't want to go away. By myself, why I choose, I cannot tell. No, I don't want to go away. Don't wanna go away Now my train's pulling in I can hear the growing din Still, don't wanna go away Girl, don't wanna go away If I could, I would stay Where I'd fly as far away But for those times, I'm a one-man guy but those times, I got split inside Drunk after dark, ripped in Alexander Park. Oh, don't wanna go away. Don't wanna go away. So red bread, rich with pride. Keep my secret safe inside. No, don't wanna go away. Oh, don't wanna go away. Rotterdam, old and new. We're both bombed and built in two. Oh, don't wanna go away. Oslo's hard Nordic chromes Odin broke my foreign bones I'll get home, I'll find a way I'll get home, I will find my way Planes coming in, I can see the ground again. Tell my love, I found my way. Tell myself that I found my way. Why if our times come again? Let me hold you, cause I can. Cause I'm home, I'd like to stay. While I'm home, I would like to stay. Made this choice by myself. What I did, I'll never tell. Though I'll bring you far away. Oh, I'll keep you so far away. Oh, my train's pulling in Now I hear the low ring din 
Later I'm off in the night again Later I'm off on my own again Again Ryan is a good man on the uh, on the hot seat there. Seems like a problem solver. Well, Boxo Studio wow. is a, is a hermetically sealed environment, uh, and so I'm trapped here. Yeah. Well, no, I, I mean that there's there's we we we're very fana- very fanatical about having a, a clean uh, dust free environment. Yeah. So I'm, I'm <laughs> So I just brought, I'm like I'm like pig pen. I just have a yeah, cloud. Yeah, exactly. It. And then so unless like we could get some sort of plastic like for toddlers, you could put over top of the board, you know, so you could still have your chicken wing sauce, greasy things on it, and, and dust, and it would still operate. Yeah, that's Since, all right. Yeah, well, they haven't got there yet. We get to, like all the George software. Foreman troughs on the <laughs> yes. on the mixing board. It's kind of the, all the fat dribbles <laughs> down. down. Perfect idea. You can catch Perfect it. idea. The George Foreman us. mixing board. <laughs> So uh, tell us about the, the the new album and what you've got coming up. I see um, and what you're doing. Uh, I'm now. pretty. I'm kind of diving in headlong right around this time. We've been tinkering in the studio here in Hamilton at the White House with Nick, and uh, and then a buddy, an old friend of mine, uh, James uh, Chapel, who runs a uh, production company out of Toronto and in and uh, uh, Seattle called Voodoo Highway, and they do a lot of television production and production for bands and stuff kind of we we got reconnected we'd always meant to work together and every year we'll re you know catch up and with one another and this year we just recently we said now we're going to do it finally so producing a bunch of I'm, I'm, I'm whipping together a bunch of raw tracks and uh sending it to him we're going to bounce some things back and forth and i'll get into the studio with uh them to to finish it up uh and hopefully, I don't know. I feel pretty good about the collaboration, and I'm really excited to to make another big record. And um, it should be out in October. It's one of the great things, isn't it? When you do make a record, it's it's to, to, to work with other people and yeah. kind of share that joy. You know, it's like to writing. You know, there's some solitary times in music, but boy, when you feel that uh, that connection, it's, yeah, it's kind of magical. It's nice when you've known someone for for 15 years or something. They kind of really get you really get where each other's coming from and, and you can finish each other's sentences and stuff so um it's a pretty uh, amazing turn of events that i'm going to be working with uh james and the guys at voodoo uh so i don't know we'll, we'll be looking for that in the fall you say yeah it's going to put it out on i'm going to put it out on uh, headless owl which is a label out uh, based out of white horse and Berlin, <laughs> so White Horse. <laughs> you really, uh, one of the founders lives still in White Horse, and, and then Matthias Com from the Burning Hell is a, is a co-founder of the label, and they do all vinyl. So it'll just come out. I, don't know, I mean, maybe we'll figure out other medium media, other mediums as well. But yeah. uh, it's just uh, gonna gonna do a vinyl thing. Fantastic. It should be fun. You uh, you up to play it another one uh, for us live here in the studio? I mean, Why not? I love, I love when people come in and they play music live. You know. Thank you. I'm re- always reluctant because I figured I recorded it. Yeah. In a yeah. Fancy studio, but this is it's nice for me to try some new stuff. So thanks for having me in. Right on. It's been great. Oh, this was called "People Can Change." And it's about you, you're buzzing up a storm. There no, this too. was me too. Yeah, we're, yeah. We're, we're at least we're not tooting and hooting. Yeah, we turned it off. And everything. <laughs> It's called People Can Change is about uh, trying to be better, trying to be better at everything, right on. getting caught up in, uh, but giving up on people and, and the opposite. Someone tried to tell you that people are the same. Giving all or nothing, we will take all ours till nothing remains. 
Nothing but the blame I hear what they're saying If people treat you wrong You can shut them out entire It's a righteous way To keep yourself strong Walk it alone But people can change People can change People can change Oh, people can change Babe, I've seen it in you A part of you will take The other part's a martyr Gonna give yourself for everyone's sake Until the heart break And I know what you've been through I paid my, my fair share I can see this world will leave your spirit thin with demon despair I feel him in there But people can change love People can change People can change Oh, people can change So rail against the devil or lock him up inside You can shut him out entire Or you hold him close And fill him with light Cause everything's right I heard it in a story A fable or a lie Someone gave their glory And the whole world woke They rose overnight Tales as true as you like Cause people can change love People can change People can change People can change People all can change People can change People can change People can change A nice message to end on You know, it's not as dark as you seem And uh, we all We all work I think get a little bit better every day You know It's gonna work out And uh I definitely picked the optimism. Two uh, steps forward, one back, one step back. back. Yeah, it doesn't mind it no matter if you slide a little bit. We all do. You can't keep it up uh, forever. But uh, my God, as long as it's in the right direction, and uh, you know, I love your new music. You know, I love the music uh, that you've recorded in the past. I'm glad that you're you're still pursuing it and doing it with the juggling of the family and the. Uh, and the other challenges in life, but uh, you're a unique individual, and, and uh, I'm certainly proud to have had you on the show. I want to thank you for uh, coming in and sharing a little bit about, uh, you know, what's in your mind and what's in your life these days. Thank you. Uh, I'm not that unique, but thank you very much. It's really <laughs> awesome to see what you're doing here, and this is like you've done 30-some-odd episodes. Was this really 33, a, Ryan? A treat to be part of. 33. Number 33. I like this. 32 weeks. We had one double day. We had one double day. <laughs> 32 weeks, 33 episodes or something. I don't know about that 33. I think it's a good number. I think yeah. it's lucky, right? The odd numbers. It's one of those... <laughs> one of those magical I think we hit moments. them some, a third of the way through. We just... You keep going. Right. 33 to 3rd RPM. There yeah, you go. Right. It's, it's, the last 20 minutes was three quarters of the way to 100. That's right. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> yeah. All right. We're back next week with the uh, bunch of young uh, savage rock and rollers, uh, part of the spectrum that's always interesting to look at. Monkeys with machetes. Uh, don't miss that one. Awesome name. It's going to be great. <laughs> it's going to be great. And uh, Are they bringing monkeys with machetes? I don't know. That, I don't know. Should we be, now. Should we be worried? Like, <laughs> they kind of, you know. We'll have to tune in to find out. All right. Thanks for coming right. out. And we'll see, see you next time on Barbershop Podcast. <laughs>